Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on vulnerability scanning versus penetration testing. Today I'm going to be talking about vulnerability scanning and penetration testing, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on levels of testing. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing vulnerability scanning and penetration testing. Vulnerability scanning is usually conducted using specialized applications in an effort to find weaknesses in a network. It is usually conducted using protocol analyzers and port scanners. These applications can be used to determine which protocols and services are being used on a network. Protocol analyzers can also be used to determine which ports are open on a network. This information can be used by security experts to help harden the network against attacks. Vulnerability scanning does not attempt to exploit any weaknesses that are found. It only identifies them for the security personnel. Hopefully the security personnel will then take care of those vulnerabilities. The purpose of vulnerability scanning is to assess the configuration of systems and networks to determine what can be done to increase the level of security. This is done by passively collecting information and reporting on that information that is collected in a non-intrusive manner. The scan can help to identify different issues, as in lack of security controls. Common misconfigurations in both applications and devices are often found with a vulnerability scan. There are other vulnerabilities that may be recognized, including the use of unsecure protocols or open ports. There are two different types of vulnerability scans that should be conducted with the results compared with one another. The first vulnerability scan should be done as an authorized user. This is called a credentialed scan and this should be conducted from an administrative account. So the scan will have complete access to the full system. The other type of scan should be done as an unauthorized user. This is called a non-credentialed scan, and it should be conducted to determine what an unauthorized user may find out about the system. Something to remember about vulnerability scanning is it is possible that a false positive may be returned. A false positive is something that is reported as a vulnerability, but isn't actually a vulnerability. Now, while a false positive may be annoying, it's better than a false negative, which is not reporting a vulnerability that is actually present. Now, that's just downright dangerous. Penetration testing, or pen testing, is actively seeking to find vulnerabilities in networks and systems that can be exploited. Once a weakness is found, the pen tester then attempts to exploit the vulnerability. Many organizations use pen testing as a means of increasing the security of their organizations. Hackers also use pen testing as a means of finding networks and systems that they can exploit. As a result, every security expert must be sure to receive explicit authorization to perform pen testing before beginning the test. If such authorization is not obtained, a security expert could face dire consequences. Unauthorized pen testing is in actuality illegal, as it's a form of hacking. Organizations often perform their own pen testing, or they may contract with a security expert or consulting firm to perform pen testing on their systems. The purpose of pen testing is to assess the security of a system or network by actually using the same methods that a hacker would use to breach security. That includes social engineering. The test can be used to verify that a threat exists, and at the same time, pen testing can also confirm that a threat doesn't exist. The pen test seeks to actively test and bypass any security controls that may be present. It is designed to exploit any vulnerabilities that may be present on the system or network. And again, unauthorized pen testing may lead to legal issues. With that done, let's move on to levels of testing. It is vital that when security tests are conducted on systems and networks, the testing be conducted at a variety of levels, just not at one level. That's not very secure. 
The first level of security testing should be done at the white box level. White box testing is when the person conducting the test has the exact details of the system or network. The tester has intimate knowledge of what is present and how it is configured. White box testing is often conducted by the person who is developing the system or the network. The next level of security testing is done at the gray box level. With gray box testing, the tester has an intermediate knowledge of how the system or network is configured. A gray box tester is often somebody who is associated with the developer. They may belong to the same group or they may be developing similar type products. The final level of security testing is done at the black box level. With black box testing, the tester, usually a security expert, is given no prior knowledge of the configuration or what is present in the system. Often, black box testing is contracted out to make sure that the tester has no advanced knowledge of what they're testing. But in all cases, the black box tester should be a security expert. That concludes this session on vulnerability scanning versus penetration testing. I began by discussing vulnerability scanning and penetration testing, and then I concluded with a brief discussion on the levels of testing. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.